Why don't more infant formula companies use organic, grass-fed whole milk instead of skim? Why don't more infant formula companies use the latest breast milk science? Why don't more infant formula companies run their own clinical trials? Why don't more infant formula companies use more of the proteins found in breast milk? Why don't more infant formula companies have their own factories instead of outsourcing their manufacturing? We wondered the same thing. So we made Byheart a better formula for formula. Learn more at byheart.com. With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hey all, welcome back to the Real Life Pharmacology Podcast. I'm your host, pharmacist Eric Christensen, and I thank you so much for listening today. Uh, definitely go check out reallifepharmacology.com. Uh, snag your free 31-page PDF on the uh, top 200 drugs. I really threw in a lot of highly testable uh, clinical pearls that uh, you can definitely uh, take advantage and, and study from, certainly. So uh, if you're out in clinical practice, might just be a, a good refresher of things that uh, you'll you'll come across and that you'll see periodically. So uh, go take advantage of that. We'll, we'll send you updates when we've got uh, new podcasts as well as um, any new content that, that we've created and, and put out as well. Uh, so let's get into the topic uh, today. Uh, the drug I wanted to cover was olanzapine. Uh, brand name of this medication uh, is Zyprexa. Uh, mechanistically, how does this medication work and what does it do? Uh, first off, it's an antipsychotic, of course, uh, and it blocks... Uh, dopamine, specifically D2, uh, dopamine 2 receptors, uh, as far as how it uh, helps with some of these symptoms of uh, psychosis uh, associated with schizophrenia and bipolar disorder and things of that nature. So uh, main uses are that schizophrenia, uh, also uh, things like mania associated with bipolar disorder, um, in addition uh, to that mechanism of, of dopamine blockade, uh, olanzapine has some antihistamine type activity, uh, possibly some alpha blocking activity, um, as well as some serotonin antagonist uh, activity as well. So, uh, not necessarily, you know, the cleanest of, of mechanisms, uh, so to speak, and that. Uh, relays into some of the adverse effects that you might see. And again, a, a lot of uh, the adverse effects are dose-dependent, as they are with many different uh, medications. Um, but first, uh, I wanted to mention um, EPS. So that, that's the, the top uh, adverse effect that you're um, likely going to hear about associated with antipsychotics. Now, olanzapine is a second-generation antipsychotic, so definitely, you know, not near as bad as a drug like haloperidol as far as those extra pyramidal symptoms go. Uh, one thing that differentiates olanzapine in the class of second-generation antipsychotics, so remember that's quetiapine and risperidone, uh, aripiprazole, so all those different um, second-generation uh, drugs is, Olanzapine is notorious for weight gain, and it's also higher on the list as far as sedation goes. So that's two, I think, really important things to remember. If you've got uh, an at-risk schizophrenic that's already overweight, obese, maybe they have uh, diabetes or elevated lipids, for example, uh, olanzapine is probably a drug we're going to try to steer clear of. Uh, compared to some of the other agents that might not be uh, as tough um, on the uh, metabolic uh, adverse effect profile list there. So uh, definitely remember that, you know, elevations in blood sugar, elevations in cholesterol. And while that is associated as a class effect of antipsychotics, uh, olanzapine is, is high up on the list. So remember uh, sedation and weight gain for sure there. Um, other kind of generic adverse effects that certainly are associated with olanzapine 
um, but maybe not as high as some of the other agents. Uh, QTC prolongation, uh, elevated prolactin levels, um, hypotension. Remember, there's, there's potential that it can have some uh, alpha blocking uh, type activity. And then anticholinergic activity as well. Um, I generally think of this a little bit more so uh, if I've got a patient who's already on anticholinergics. We could add on uh, to that anticholinergic uh, burden there. And then rarely antipsychotics uh, are associated with uh, neuroleptic uh, malignant syndrome. Again, extremely rare there. Um, dosage forms I did want to mention. The, obviously, the most often... Uh, most used dosage form that I see uh, is simply just the, the tablet, um, but there is a long-acting injectable, uh, Zyprexa Relprev, it's called, um, and I don't see it used very often, and I think the reason is there's a, a warning uh, with that uh, long-acting injectable that's given every two to four weeks usually, um, where the patient actually requires three hours of observation at a healthcare facility following uh, administration of the drug. So there's uh, delirium and sedation uh, risk associated right after um, that long-acting injection. So I think that's an important thing to remember just in case you do happen uh, to see that, that drug. They're likely getting it um, in clinic or within a healthcare uh, institution of some capacity there. Uh, always remember, of course, with NA antipsychotic as well, another warning, uh, increased mortality risk uh, in those elderly patients with uh, dementia-related psychosis. All right, so let's take a quick break from our sponsor, and we'll wrap up uh, with drug interactions. If you're in the market for pharmacist board certification study material like BCPS, BCACP, BCGP, or BCMTMS, uh, definitely go check out meded101.com slash store. Uh, in addition, we've got links to our NAPLEX content. Um, so again, go check out meded101.com slash store. Uh, if you're not a pharmacist, uh, we've got books there as well. We've got recent um, drug interaction book for primary care folks. Um, if you're a dietitian or, or other uh, healthcare professional looking for kind of a reference guide on drugs, uh, recently put out a drug food interaction book. Um, so go check that out for sure. Uh, again, all these links at meded101.com slash store. And uh, lastly, I've got Audible books there as well. Uh, so you can get your first one for free. Um, drug interaction book is a good one to, to potentially start with. A 10-hour um, audio book uh, you can get for free if you've never tried uh, an audible.com book. Uh, so again, all those links, meded101.com slash store. So continuing on drug interactions, um, remember that olanzapine uh, is metabolized by CYP1A2. So this will help you remember uh, some interactions. And if you remember uh, tizanidine uh, from a previous podcast episode, uh, tizanidine is also impacted uh, excuse me, broken down by CYP1A2. And one of the major medications that inhibits CYP1A2 is ciprofloxacin, okay? So ciprofloxacin can inhibit CYP1A2 and raise concentrations of olanzapine. So good one to uh, definitely remember there. Um, other things to uh, think about, uh, fluvoxamine is a CYP1A2 inhibitor. That's Luvox. Uh, it's an SSRI, rarely, rarely used um, due to significant uh, drug interactions there. Um, one unique uh, adverse effect, um, or excuse me, drug interaction, is smoking cessation. And I actually did a blog post uh, on this at meded101.com where it was a case study where a patient stopped smoking and it caused olanzapine concentrations to go up, causing adverse effects from the drug. So smoking, cigarette smoking, actually induces CYP1A2. So in this case scenario, when they stopped smoking, 
they lowered the activity of CYP1A2, which allowed more olanzapine to hang around and cause uh, adverse effects like sedation, for example. So really interesting case. You can go check out, um, if you just Google search um, smoking cessation and olanzapine, MedEd 101, you should be able to, to find that article. Um, but uh, it, it is a, a, a good, a unique one to remember because um, most uh, people certainly uh, don't think of uh, smoking cessation as uh, having negative effects. But um, certainly in, in this case, it did have a negative impact on uh, the olanzapine concentration. So very, very rare adverse effect, unique adverse effect. Um, but uh, again, a good reason to have a, a pharmacist on the team uh, looking at these things and, and thinking about it. Uh, of course, with drug interactions, you got to think of those additive effects. Of course, sedation, you know, your alcohol, your benzos, your opioids, things of, of that nature, other CNS depressants, uh, anticholinergic burden. I kind of alluded uh, to that before. Uh, additive effects from dopamine blocking agents. Uh, in clinical practice, uh, metoclopramide is probably the one I see used uh, most often uh, for, you know, gastroparesis or something like that. Uh, and then, of course, QTC uh, prolongation. So antipsychotics can prolong uh, the QT interval. So we need to think about agents that um, can potentially add to that and or uh, risk factors that a patient might have. And also... Uh, hypotension. So if you got a patient uh, on numerous blood pressure medications, fall risk, uh, things of that nature, you got to remember that olanzapine could definitely uh, add to that potential risk. All right, so I think that's going to wrap it up for today. I thank you so much for listening. Uh, if you enjoyed the show, uh, picked up a clinical pearl or two, uh, leave us a kind rating and review on iTunes or wherever you're listening. Uh, that's greatly appreciated. Uh, also, share us with your classmates, friends, colleagues, uh, students, whoever you have around you that uh, enjoys uh, learning different things about pharmacology and healthcare uh, and medications. So, uh, appreciate uh, all of you who have uh, done that and, and helped this podcast uh, grow uh, to, to what it's become. So, uh, and again, support our sponsor, meded101.com slash store. Greatly appreciative uh, to those of you who have done that. If you want to track me down, uh, find me at LinkedIn, Eric Christensen, PharmD, BCPS, BCGP. And uh, I am going to uh, sign off for today, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on chumbacasino.com. I looked over at the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at chumbacasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's chumbacasino.com and live the chumba life. No purchase necessary. VGW. Void. we prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.